So let's look at this work here. This part could, would, would be to answer a question like, uh, find the area under this curve. If we then find the area and we divide it by the width, then we'll be finding find the average value of f of x. Okay, because here, here's what we here's f of x between zero and three uh, is going to be something like. So between 0 and 3, it's going to look something like this. And here is 2, and 3 is over here. And so the total area under the curve is going to be, well, a little more uh, positive than negative. And it's going to come out to be 26.1. Okay, it's going to have this positive area to this negative area and get an overall positive area of 26.1. If we then divide it by, Three. This is zero. This is three. If we divide it by that width, then it's going to give us the average value, which will be, you know, somewhere in here. That's what this is. Look at this value. We don't want the average value of the function. We want the average rate of change, or the average value of the rate of change, or the average value of the derivative. But think about this. If I take the derivative of this, and then I use this process, which would be correct. Let's think about what would happen. I take the derivative. All right, so I've got the function that tells me the rate of change. And then I'm going to do this. Take the antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of this? This is just the same. It's just that, yeah. right? So we take the antiderivative, which is just this, from 0 to 3. And we do f of b minus f of a. We just put 3 in there and 0 in there and subtract. All righty. Right? But we want the average, right? So we do, so we're going to multiply this by 1 over b minus a. We're going to divide that by b minus a. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we'll just take. 3 to the 4th minus 5 to the 3 to the 4th minus 5 times 3. So it's minus. 81 minus 15, which is 66. 66, and this is 0. 66, and what do we do with 66? Divide by 3. If this were a function that told us like how far we were, like what our distance was. If I told you that I was uh, zero, I, I was at a distance of zero at, at zero hours, the beginning of my trip, and then three hours later, I was, let's find out, let's ask the calculator. Second table, it's no second table. Where would I be at three hours? 66, okay, we found that out. If this were, 66. If I told you that, I only gave you these two pieces of information, I said at time zero I was, I hadn't left yet, and then at time three I was 66 miles away, how would you find my average rate of change? My average speed? Distance over time, right? Total change, that's what we did here, total change over time, okay? Over the Pay attention to like if you see average, it's good to think, oh, okay, it's going to be antiderivative. I'll go over that interval and I'll divide by the width of the interval. But then you got to think it's asking for the average, not the average value, but the average rate of change. And if you think about this for a second, you realize oh, when I when I take the derivative and then I go to take the antiderivative, I just get this. Right? And so we just realize that that part very simple. 
plug in three, plug in zero. Okay. Um, anybody else have one that's pretty straightforward? Position of the particle is moving along for what values? Is the speed of the particle increasing? Okay. All right. So the speed, remember that the speed is whether moving forward or backward. Okay, so how did you do that? Stops moving, slope yeah. is zero. Yeah, so it's not moving. It could possibly change direction, so. Yeah. Uh, change direction, yes. Yeah. That's where it could change direction. Yes. Possible. Because it's stopped now. Yeah. Yeah. So to change direction, it has to stop. It could be moving forward, stop, and move backwards. All right. So that's where its speed is zero. Right. So what did you do to find out where the speed is increasing? So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so one would be positive. That's what's there. So S prime of one is positive. Yeah. Um, prime of four is negative. Is negative. And then I did S prime of ten, and that's negative. It's negative. Mm -hmm. Six hundred. Six hundred minus forty. Four hundred and eighty minus plus ninety. So the first one, so one is positive, yep. four is negative, yep. and ten is positive. Okay. So what did that tell us? Uh, it's, 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 it's,
know is that the speed is positive yeah. here and positive here. But could your speed be positive and be decreasing? Yeah. So just because it's positive doesn't mean it's increasing. Okay, so let's consider, let, let's... So it could be... Increasing the point. I just have it, like, in the table on 3.5. Uh -huh. And it's on 4, it goes from negative 6 to 0, so that's going to increase. It goes from, okay, it goes from negative 6 to 0. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then would that bump it up? So the speed is increasing. Yeah. But also, if it goes from... Uh, still positive though, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what is that thing that's 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 changing so that, that my speed is increasing? I'm speeding up. What do we call that? I am accelerating. accelerating. Right? And so if I'm moving forward and I'm accelerating positively, then my speed's increasing. But if I'm moving forward positive and my acceleration is negative. <coughs> that uh, my speed is positive, but it's decreasing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we need to figure out, basically, where is the speed positive and the acceleration positive? Right? Positive, positive, I'm speeding up. Or the speed is negative, and the acceleration is negative. So when? How do we find the acceleration? This is our position. This is our yeah. What? The rate or the speed. The speed, the the, the velocity, yeah. right? Uh, and how do we find the acceleration? So couldn't we put like one of those numbers into the position? And do what? And I was just gonna see figure out if it's greater like greater or less than the speed, then wouldn't that tell us actually the position is less than the speed? Yeah, I don't know. Position and speed are like, to compare them would be hard because like, yeah. I'm three feet away but I'm going five mm -hmm. meters per second. So okay. how that? Can we all agree that if my, if my speed is positive and my acceleration is positive, I'm speeding up. And if my speed is positive, my, my acceleration is negative, I'm slowing down my speed. How do we find acceleration? How do we find acceleration? We do know. Just like maybe feedback, back, look at our notes, yeah. pull our brains. I take the derivative of the position to get velocity. Second derivative. We take the derivative of the velocity to get acceleration. Okay? Maybe an old idea, not a new idea. Maybe rusty, but not new. We take the derivative of the position, we get how fast the position is changing. Velocity. Yeah. Whenever we take the derivative, we're getting the rate of change. So if I take the derivative of the velocity, 
the derivative of the rate of change, the rate of change of the rate of change, as we accelerate towards. So we take the second derivative, so 12t minus 48. So what are we doing with that? Set it equal to zero. Where does my acceleration change? 12t minus 48t is equal to 4. So at 4, our acceleration changes. It's going to change from positive to negative or negative to positive. <laughs> What's that? So we have to find out. So we put in, uh, say, 0. What do we have? A, what kind of acceleration? Negative, negative acceleration. Okay. Um, and then, so say s double prime of 0 is negative. And s double prime of 5 is positive. <coughs> so from negative infinity to 3, our velocity, our, or, yeah, our, our velocity is, is positive, but our acceleration is negative. So if our velocity is positive, but our acceleration is negative, are we speeding up or slowing down? We're slowing down. We don't. That's not going to work. Okay. Um, so that's from negative infinity to 3. But from 3 to 4, our velocity is negative, And our acceleration is negative. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. I want to make sure that the way I have it written here isn't, isn't the best. Okay. So... From negative infinity to 3, we have positive velocity, but in, uh, a negative acceleration, so we're slowing down. But from 3 to 4, um, we have a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, so we might, our speed is increasing. Like we're going backwards and faster. Okay. We're going backwards faster and faster and faster. Um, what's that? Oh. The, but then from... Uh, 4 on, from 4 to infinity, now our acceleration is positive, right? Which means that if we're moving backwards and our acceleration is positive, we're slowing down again. But then once we stop at 5 and we, uh, for, from 5 to infinity, uh, we have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration, which means we're speeding up. So we're, we're, our speed is increasing from 3 to 4 and 5 to infinity. Real quick, let's look at number one. This is a basically simple one. Way, way back, even the end of last school year, we were doing this. Is this look familiar? Yes. Why does it look familiar? It's the. I. It's how we find the. Yeah. The slope of the tangent line, yeah. Exactly. So the slope of the tangent line at 3 pi over 2. In what function? The cosine function. What else tells you the slope of the tangent line? The derivative. The derivative. So we can just take the cosine, take the derivative of the cosine, which is? Um, negative sine. Negative sine of x. And what x value are we using? 3 pi over 2. Negative sine of 3 pi over 2. 
a negative, what's the sign of 3 pi over 2? It's negative 1. So 1. So you, can, you don't have to like do the same method? Like no, it just recognize that what, what this guy is trying to do is, is the, the hard way of finding the derivative. We'll just shortcut it, find the derivative. An easy way, plug in 3 pi over 2. And there you have it. Wait, how do you have this over that part without the rest of it? Right, the h is. This whole thing, yeah. when we take f of x plus h minus f of x over h and let h go to infinity, yeah. that is the definition of the derivative. So we can do it that way, or we can find the derivative in the way that we know to find derivatives, right, with our <coughs> short path. So we recognize that if we were to do all of this work, all we do is find the slope of the cosine at 3 pi over 2. Well, I can do that same thing by taking the derivative of the cosine and plug it in 3 pi over 2, and that's the slope. Right of the other guys. Gotta go get my Krispy Kremes.